he's going to kind of give you some opening statements, remarks, and then you can fire away questions to him and then the players after that. So, Coach, take it away. Uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all coming today. Uh, guys really do. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about this season and, and uh, what's out there in front of us for uh, a while. You know, been going around South Arkansas, went to Camden, Texas County, El Dorado, uh, had a meeting here in town. Uh, uh, just people uh, around the area trying to get them, uh, you know, knowledgeable what's going on with Southern Arkansas football and and uh, what we feel about our football team this year. Um, we're excited about it. Excited about what we got in front of us. Uh, the talent level we have on our football team. Uh, you know, we want people to uh, new riders that haven't been out there following us in a while, want them to come back and, and get behind us. We're putting a great product on the field. Talented players. Uh, and, and let's fill these stands up. I mean, we got some exciting things going, uh, you know, with us uh, playing a Thursday night game here in, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Harding. And CBS going to have it on national TV. Hopefully we can get everybody in the area to come out and, and watch that game. And, uh, uh, you know, it, everything's in, in place for an you know, exciting year for us. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, from a coaching standpoint, you, you worry about injuries and, can we keep this guy healthy? Can we get a bounce here, a bounce there that goes our way? And if those things, if we stay healthy and we get a few bounces our way, your rider's going uh, to have a good year, we feel like, a very good year. And our expectations are very high. We talked about it with our football team. We reported yesterday, had our first practice this morning. Um, got a good-looking bunch out there. Love for you to come watch us. Uh, and, you know, any day you want to come watch us practice and and uh, just, just see for yourself. Uh, uh, so... Uh, Appreciate it. again y'all coming, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'd love to take any of your questions. Bill, what's been the biggest improvement in your team this off season? This off season, uh, you know, I, I I think the biggest hurdle we 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 really got over the biggest hurdle last year. I mean, uh, it, it was a mental. Uh, a lot of it's mental. Uh, of course, there was a talent problem. You know, we weren't talented enough when I first got here. We we've gotten more and more talented as, as the years have gone on, but. Uh, you know, mentally start bleeding, and uh, you know I think uh, we really crossed the hurdle with that last year against Harding. Uh, even though we lost the game, I think that was a big uh, mental block for us to get across that. Uh, we walked off that field that day, even though we had a loss. Uh, we knew we could beat anybody in our league at that point in time, and uh, you know we just built on that through the off season. All season for us, what we've done with this football team is uh, you know add good quality players to the equation uh, with the good ones we already had. So it, that makes us a much deeper football team uh, right now. I mean, I, I'm looking for guys that, you know, if, if Mark gets winded, I got another back to put in that's quality. Right now, we got a stable of guys behind him that, and there's gonna be a lot of competition uh, for somebody to get, uh, get on the field. It uh, really is. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking for that guy, next guy to, to be behind this guy when, when he leaves. And, uh, you know, uh, so uh, we, we feel like we're deep in every area. We really do on, on offense and defense, and we have made some huge improvements in the kicking game, and that was very evident in our first scrim uh, scrimmage last spring. You know, uh, we're out here and the wind's blowing, it's cold, and, uh, and no whack from about 45 yards three times in a row went right through the uprights. We couldn't, yeah, couldn't even begin to do that last year, so that's a big improvement for us. Coach, let's hear about some of your uh, recruits who are uh, new to the program this year. Who who are you really looking for? to uh, help you? Well, you know, I mean, we, we tell them all to come ready to play, and, and, and we, we're truthful when we say that. I mean, you never know what a, a freshman's going to come in and be ready. Uh, you know, we, we want to, uh, really, we want to concentrate uh, in our region uh, in recruiting. We're, we're going to hit uh, Arkansas hard. Uh, we got out there last year and offered 16 guys in the state of Arkansas, and we were able to attract nine to sign with us. Uh, we're going to hit uh, East Texas area from Dallas all the way down to Houston and everything in between. And right now we've got great relationships with those coaches in that area that, you know, they got a kid on their football football team that's not uh, not a Division One. Uh, I'm talking uh, uh, Big 12 or SEC type player, then they're talking about us to them. And, uh, in fact, we've had a couple in that area that they call us uh and, and point their guy our, our direction so that that's huge for us i mean when we first got out on the road in east texas when i first got here it was like they acted surprised when we walked in the door like man we hadn't seen you guys in forever where y'all been and uh, uh right now we're in there all the time uh, as much as we can legally and uh <laughs> so um you know we, we've really had you know we, we tried to address uh you know the 
The fact that we got five senior linebackers on our football team going out the door this year, Sam being one of them, uh, we wanted to have a nice group of uh, freshman linebackers coming in behind them that uh, have a year to be under their guidance a little bit, learn the ropes and, and grow up a little bit and be ready to take over when they're gone. Uh, so we, we signed five linebackers uh, this year and uh, we signed a host of running backs because we know we've got marks going out the door uh, after this year and we need somebody ready to go behind them and that's the way we've approached it all. Uh, you know, I, not any one particular guy that I, I'm counting on that now we got to have you play. And that, when you get to that point as a football team, you know you're in good shape. Uh, if I'm counting on a high school guy to come in and, and produce for us right off the bat, and these guys know it, they know we're in trouble. And uh, they know right now we're not counting on that at all. Now, if one does, great. Looks like a lot of new names at wide receiver, slot receiver. Yeah, you know, yeah we tried to add some to it. You know, obviously, we, we brought in Z-Ware last, uh, last spring. He's out of uh, junior college in California. He's originally from Florida. He's a, he's a 10, 300-meter guy coming out of high school. He's a, a true deep threat. Uh, Brought in Brandon Hogney, who's out of the Dallas area, played out at uh, Bakersfield, California. He's their all-time leading receiver at Bakersfield Junior College, which is pretty good junior college football that we've added to the equation. You know, Chris Terry's back, very solid for us. Uh, uh, you know, you got we've got our leading receiver back with Jack Brown, uh, another very solid guy, and then and Josh Prophet in his senior year that uh, you know was back, didn't get to play last year because of a knee injury. So we got we got a really good solid core. We've added some good young kids to the equation. Uh, but the good thing for us, you know, we don't have to have that many receivers and the fact that we got two really good tight ends too that, that are good receivers and uh, uh, with Brooks White and, and Paul Walker Hall. So, uh, you know, we feel very solid about our receiving core. Uh, we just, we just got to get it, get it to them, have time to get it off. What's the, what are your numbers, returners, offense and defense? Oh, gosh. I mean, six by six. You get quite a few, right? That. You may know that better than me, but it, it's, it's pretty substantial yeah. amount. I mean, we've got, I think, 22 seniors, which we ain't never been close to that uh, since I've been here. Uh, we got about 48 in our ju junior senior class classes. Uh, that's that's a veteran football team. And that's where we want to be. We want to, you know, you want to get to where you have about 20 to 25 in each class uh, each year, and uh, then you know you're pretty on, on stable ground. I mean, we we've been. Our, our senior classes here since I've been here have been, been about 12. And, uh, you know, by the time the end of the season, you got about half of them playing. So uh, uh, we, we've stepped it up in that aspect. Tyler, can you talk to me about being a quarterback? What's the daily life like for you? Do you come out and watch film? And you just mentioned the receivers. How's that development been for you? Uh, well, it's it's been great. Over this, this past few years, um, it's been something that I've learned. You know, in high school, I didn't – didn't have a lot of film study. I didn't didn't know really what I was doing. But coming here, actually getting coaching and and uh, just getting to, to come and to watch film and to be prepared to go into a game, to go into practices, saying, okay, if we see this, we're going to do this. I mean, that makes a huge difference. You're confident in what you're doing, um, and that's something that's great about this semester. Is since I graduated in December, I'm in the graduate program here, and um, all my classes are online, so I can come down at eight in the morning and watch film all morning with the coaches, get a game plan. Um, and then go eat lunch with, and then come back. You know, I don't have an agenda. I don't have classes to go to. So I think that will be a huge improvement for me as far as being mentally prepared and helping getting my teammates mentally prepared. Um, but, yeah, that's, it's huge. It's, it's very beneficial to actually know what you're seeing, know what they're doing. And what are some of the strengths and weaknesses to your game? Do you feel better in the pocket, out of the pocket? What, what would you say? Definitely in the pocket. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough, you know, God's blessed me with athletic ability just enough to, to be able to, whenever things do break down, to, to make a play on the run. Um, am, I, am I looking to do that? No, I would much rather take a drop, sit in the pocket, make my read and make the throw. But, um, you know, I, I feel like I have gotten more athletic. You know, I grew six inches my going into my ninth grade year and I was very uncoordinated. But, you know, that, not my freshman year of college, it was high school. So. Um, growing into my body, getting stronger, getting faster has really helped with my athletic ability as far as making throws on the run. But um, yeah, just sitting in the pocket is more, I guess, a pro style or whatever you want to call it, um, pocket passer. Coaches hold their breath when you take off? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he's got. I'm just talking speed. about it from as far as getting hit. I'm not talking about not. He's actually got better speed than what most yeah. people think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and he is a load to get down now. We don't like to see him duck his head and try to run over anybody because I mean we, you know, I, I make fun of him at the time we call him glass, you know, because you know he, he he will get woozy if he gets him pretty good. <laughs> he ain't used to it, so. <laughs> but uh, 
Gav really, offensive lines for. Guys really worked at his game. Uh, really worked at his game, and he's been tutored really well uh, by Coach Kemp. And uh, you know what he's got to be able to see and understand. Uh, Coach Kemp has a real good understanding of what secondaries are doing, and he can see things that uh, uh, even sees them before I do, and, and what they do, and how they move, and how they can detect what's coming. Uh, it's really fun to watch, and uh, he's really taken it in and made a lot of improvement with his game. Well, Tyler, um, talking about your faith, how does that get you ready? How does that help you with the game, playing football? Well, yeah, obviously my faith is the, the most important thing to me, and I know that God has got me here for a reason and that everything happens for a reason. So um, when I think of my life, when I think of this team, when I think of how he's brought everything together to this moment, to right now where we are, to the team that we have, um, I think it gives me confidence because I know that regardless of how this season goes for me, whether I go out this next practice and get hurt or whether I be successful and get a chance in the NFL, whatever happens, I'm going to be completely fine because because my faith in, in Christ is, is above all. Now, am I going to work my tail off to, to get ready and to get my team ready to, to be and to give our chance the team for or to the championship? Of course. Um, and it really, it's, it's daily motivation to me to, to work as hard as I can to glorify God with the ability that he's given me, with the, this area of life, this time in my life is special. You know, people look up to me. Um, people look up to all these guys in here because we're athletes. You know, getting to go speak at elementary schools is really awesome. I think it's great. And it just, it, it puts it in perspective for me that this is a game that we've been given, and it is fun. I love it. God has given us a passion for it. But it's to glorify his name, it's to make his name famous, and I'm thankful that I get to do it. So that's the perspective I take at it. I want to be the best I can to glorify him in it all. Coach Keppel, uh, the GAC, um, Hamilton hit first, New Orleans second. You got opened up in Southeast Oklahoma. Talk about the conference and, and you know, what it's like. Well, I mean, first of all, we're in a good league. I mean, it's a good league. I think it was a good move. It is definitely a good move for us in football. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of the schools in our league are very comparable in size, enrollment, and those types of things. So it makes us pretty much on a level playing field in a lot of aspects. Uh, uh, it's good football. It's good league. Talented. I mean, just look at these guys and what they've done and, and, and some of the teams we're playing. Uh, obviously, Henderson, uh, their preseason ranked off of what they did last year, and they got a good football team coming back. They're going to be well coached, and they're talented. There's no doubt about that, but we think we are too. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it, it's a mixture for something really special. Uh, you know, but we got a lot of games to get across before we get to that, and, and we're not thinking ahead of anybody. I mean, we, we struggled at Southeast Louisiana last year. I mean, Southeast uh, Oklahoma last year, and uh, and we're and they got us coming in there on Thursday night this year. And I, you know, I'm sure that's a little bit of angle for them to have an advantage. They're thinking that way. Uh, uh, they feel like they can get more people out on a Thursday night there. But uh, you know, if you're not ready to play in college football, like me and Lou were talking about earlier today, if you're not ready to play in college football every Saturday, you can get beat real easy. Uh, uh, there's a fine line in winning and losing. I try to tell these guys all the time, and you got to respect every opponent you play. If you don't, uh, it can be a bad day for you. So, uh, but, but all in all, looking at at the big picture of it, we feel we feel very confident in our ability and our talent level that we we're on par. And right now, for the first time, we're getting uh, we're hearing our name in, in uh, national talk, and, and it's been a long time for that. So we're excited about that, and uh, we we're just looking forward to the opportunity. Sam, if you can, uh, Luke Lansdale, what, what has he meant to this team, uh, and especially you being in the same unit? Luke's been big. The guy can see a screen from anywhere. That, that guy can see a screen now. I mean, he'll get on it. But he's moving to Mike, actually, and that's going to be big for us because we have Tate in front of him, then we have Luke right behind him when he needs a spell. And Luke is just super consistent, just a guy that we can really depend on. But he's been, he's been big. And how's, how's, how's your offseason been so far? Great, I actually stayed in Magnolia. About 30 of us stayed here. We worked out together. We did our own workouts together. We kind of like, say Tyler one day would pick a workout and we'd do that workout. I would pick one one day. That's just kind of how it went. But we had a, we had a great summer. And for you, uh, Ashton, uh, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. Uh, what, what about uh, Cornelius Watson? What, what has he brought to this team? Uh, Cornelius has brought energy. You know, he, he has a real passion for the game and Technique wise, he, he's long, you know, and I, I feel if, you know, he could play to his full potential, he would be a, a beast at, at the end because he's long. Okay? No one can, can put a hand on him. And, you know, we worked with him um, throughout the offseason, you know, summers or whatnot when he stayed and 
we, you know, tried to get him the, the best technique wise and what pass rush move would be better for him and get him to um, come off the ball, really. But he, he's a, a real good player, you know, full potential wise. He's a good player. And for you, how's the entire defensive line looked, including yourself? Oh, we're, we're great, you know. I, I feel I feel that, to be honest, I feel that, you know, the, our only downfall is that we're short. Besides <laughs> besides Steven Sanders, you know, he's probably the tallest, you know, D lineman we have right now. But energy-wise, you know, heart-wise, playing-wise, speed-wise, I feel that we're – nobody can touch us. We, we are a unit. We're one. You know, we, we get on each other. We help each other. We teach each other. But then again, we work as one. And as for myself, uh, I don't see myself as above my teammates, you know, and I try to help them as much as I can and I, and I you know, take constructive criticism from them as well. So I don't, I don't feel like I'm above or beneath anybody. Yeah. Hey Ashton, last year, and you Sam as well, the defense had a tremendous turnaround in terms of national rankings and stuff, uh, the rushing defense in particular was better about 100 spots. You guys were the number six rated defense uh, against the rush. What do you attribute to that success and that turnaround from last year, or from two years ago? Uh, last year, I didn't get to play, uh, unfortunately, because you know I slacked off a little bit grade-wise. But I've learned my lesson. You know, I, I did my time off the field, and I helped my teammates as much <coughs> as I could not playing that year. You know, so I was kind of a, you know, a helping hand to Coach Upshaw. But um, I think it was a tremendous turnaround. It, I'm not saying it was just the, the players, but how we felt about each other and playing the game of football. We had a lot more, you know, sense about the game. You know, football smart, as I should say, and we just went out every day saying that we were going to be the best defense that we could be in the GAC and it's, in the nation. And Sam, how do you think that the linebacking core helped out in stopping the run? Well, experience-wise, I mean. We, were, we actually believe in that. We really believe, and Coach Lawson has gave that to us. Coach Lawson has made us really believe, and we all believe on defense, and we're, we we don't believe anybody can run on us especially, but you play people like Henderson, Henderson is going to get yards on you, just like we get yards on people. But uh, that Henderson game, you guys be ready for that one. That's going to be a great game in all aspects. <laughs> now, Mark, uh, you personally, you're only about 183 yards away from being the all-time leading rusher at Southern Arkansas. What does that mean for you to, you know, attain that milestone? Well, it's been a long run for me because um, <laughs> being hurt, being injured, it's not, it's not really fun. So, I mean, it's a good milestone for me. I mean, you know, just being here with uh, all my the, uh, seniors and, you know, it's been a fun time. I mean, all the players that's with me, you know, we just want to win the championship. And I'm, o I'm only with 183 yards away. Could have got that last year, year before, you know, just a little more film study or something. But I mean, once I get there, it's not. It's really the whole team. I got to thank my linemen. Can't just thank myself. So core throwing the ball, you know, keeping the defense honest. So I mean, it's a good milestone, though. Proud of myself. <laughs> first game, you gonna get in the first game? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Kelpel, uh, talk about your offensive line just for a second. I know they protect Tyler and they open holes for Mark. Uh, talk about the offensive line. Well, our offensive line is still a work in progress, really is. Uh, I mean, uh, right now I, th I think the anchor in our offensive line, and I think every offensive line on our team would say is John Miller. A uh, young man from Deep Queen, Arkansas, came in here and uh, uh, started every game last year with a redshirt freshman. Right now he's about 6'4", 295, and, and really looks good. Uh, very solid fundamental football player. Uh, you know, we're going to have, a, have some new faces in the offensive line. We lost three seniors last year. Uh, Demarte Clayton, a young man from Magnolia, really had a great offseason, great summer. Uh, he's as lean as he's ever been at, at 315, 6'4", 315. Uh, one of the stronger guys on our football team, a guy that we expect to take, a, take his game to a whole other level. Uh, we really had a good recruiting year uh, last year, so those guys have already been in our program, like uh, uh, Mark Jenkins, we're expecting big things out of him. Uh, uh, Nick Nichols, uh, another guy that we have high expectations for. We're, we're a rather large group. Uh, some of them a little larger than they probably need to be. But, uh, you know, all in all, uh, you know, uh, a talented group uh, that, uh, you know, with Coach Shreker being first year with them, uh, 
uh, you know, I expect us to, to really take a big uh, stride forward. Uh, you know, obviously you have Jonathan Greenidge, uh, another guy that's a very talented at 6'7", 280. Uh, that's back. He's coming off of a, a shoulder surgery. Uh, he's going to be probably out our first two games, and then he'll be cleared to play after that. But he's out here right now doing what he can do. And uh, uh, so, you know, uh, there is a little bit of experience there. Uh, there's a lot of talent in that group, uh, and, and there's others I could, I, I could probably mention. But, uh, you know, it, uh, we're excited about our offensive line. I feel confident they can get the job done. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a great running back can make off his line, look real good, quick. You know, uh, uh, Tyler's got to make a little bit quicker uh, reads on his throws and get the ball out on time. Uh, he can help him out too. Uh, we can help him out with some play calling too. Make the defense run a bunch on some quick stuff. Uh, tire him out a little bit. That helps. So, uh, you know, it all kind of goes together. Uh, it all goes hand in hand when you got a great rush, uh, rushing attack and, and and being able to throw the football. It all all really comes together well. Uh, for an offensive football team, a uh, team that, uh, you know, we were number five offense in the country last year, we expect to be better than that this year. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's a long way uh, from probably about 165 where we were my first year here. So. Offensive line's a little bigger than your first year, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, Coach Straker played at Valdosta, uh, played on uh, their national championship team, coach there for him, and you see him out there standing amongst those guys, he looks little <laughs> out there around him. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we're large. We're a large bunch of guys. We brought in a really nice, talented uh, group of freshmen. I mean, they're a really good-looking group. Uh, you know, you just hope you can hang on to those guys. A lot of different reasons. Guys at Division Two level uh, can't stick with it, whether it's finances or girlfriends or whatever. Uh, but uh, you know, there's a lot of issues in that aspect. But uh, right now, I feel solid about our offensive line. I feel really good about it. Of course, you know, again, these guys here can can make it a little bit easier on them too. This is a question for Sam and Mark. Uh, yeah, both of y'all play running back and linebacker, a lot of high-speed collisions. Whenever you see all the concussion tests and everything that comes out, starting with Sam, does that scare you at all playing a, a position that, I mean, your head is pretty much in on every scrum and you're taking a 20-mile-per-hour hit every time. Does that scare you in your future at all? Uh, it doesn't really scare me. I've had a lot of concussions, actually, but uh, you just have to learn how to tackle correctly, really. I mean, you uh, can't really lead with your head. I mean, you just need to really need to learn how to tackle, and you won't get hurt. I mean, no, I'm not worried about it. What are you, Mark? Well, I have haven't had a concussion since high school, so really just understanding the game and just learning how to run the ball, try to not to – it's not the game anymore where you just run over everybody every time. You know, it's more of a move around, try to be elusive, you know, just learning when somebody's coming to hit you head on, just learning how to get lower. You know, trying to bring the punishment to them, but it's, I don't think it's really just going to affect my future. Just simply because I just know how to run the ball and just know the game. And Bill, are your practices less tackle heavy because of it? Yeah, I mean, we, we rarely ever have full contact practice. Now, you know, when you're an offensive lineman against a defensive lineman, that's going to be full contact. I mean, uh, pretty much all the time. I mean, you, you, that's just part of your job. And uh, as far as letting them uh, cutting them loose and tackling running backs or receivers coming across the middle and and tearing their head off, those, those days are long gone. I mean, the, the game has changed so much uh, since back when I played. I mean, uh, back in the dark ages, I'm sure they would think, back in the 70s and early early 80s, I mean, where it was three yards in a cloud of dust and once in a while you proved one. Uh, those days are, are long gone. Uh, you know, uh, obviously people have changed their uh, mindset. And, and the concussion deal is a big issue right now. Uh, and basically it's all stemming from the NFL. and. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, it is something you got to deal with. You deal with it in every sport. It's not just football. Every sport deals with it. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just one of the, the things, anything you do. I mean, you go out and ride a bicycle and you fall off and have a professor. And so, you know, I mean, we're not going to sit in the closet. Um, but uh, you, know, you just try to try to teach them the safe way to do things, keep your head up. And, and obviously the game's getting more back to trying to work with your shoulder on your tackles than just sticking a head on it. And, uh, a lot of that, I think, changed, uh, you know, with the highlights on ESPN, you know, the big hit stuff, and everybody was looking for that. And that's why tackling, I feel like, has suffered. Uh, I think the headgears are a little bit different now. When they went to the side impact, made them a lot looser. You can jerk your helmet on and off, and it's no big deal. Now, you used to, you used to have to peel it off your head. Uh, so that, that's changed, too, and uh, I think that's a little bit of an issue. Bill, talk a little bit about Tyler, what you saw when you recruited him and how he's developed. and. Maybe every which way that you would hope. You really want me to say that in prayer? 
No, we saw, uh, you know, I, I, I came across Tyler Secor's name from a good friend of mine, uh, Brooks Holland, who coaches at UCA. Uh, he was at the Clint Koch football camp. Should have been at ours, but he was his. And he, he called me and said, you know, hey, okay, well, we got a guy up here with a big time arm. He's from Jesse. Uh, Jesse, the big, tall, skinny guy, big arm, but Coach Conk don't like left handers. Okay, yeah, okay, we're going to check this guy out. And we checked him out and watched his high school film. If you watched his high school film, you probably wouldn't have signed Tyler. I mean, really. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's six foot five or so and uh, had him get out here and he threw for us some. Ooh, he's got a big arm. And uh, uh, he didn't know a lot about the game of football uh, when he got here. And he'll be the first to admit that. I don't know. Did you know the difference in cover two or cover three? Or I knew that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, the, the thing about it, you start checking on his the person he is, the character he has, and you get to know a little bit more about that. And you talk to his high school coach about that. His high school coach loves him. And uh, uh, so. Uh, you know, you're willing to take a chance on guys like that. That's the kind of guys we're looking for in our recruiting. I want guys, number one, every guy I recruit here, if you're not coming to get a college degree, don't come. I don't want you. Because, I mean, you're going to have to stay on track to get a college degree to play for us. And if you ain't got your mind set on that, then don't come. I don't want guys just to come here to play football and have a good time and party. I mean, that, that's not it. Tyler was not that guy. Uh, so, uh, you know, with his character and background and the, and the, the – the tools that he had, physical tools that he had in front of him, you know, he, he had a lot of promise. And and, and uh, he, he chose to come here, and we didn't give you a lot of money at that. You know? <laughs> uh, and uh, gave him a very minimal scholarship to come here. And, uh, man, he proved us that he, he could get it done pretty quick. Now, he's a competitor. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you can go back to his red shirt. Uh, his first year was tough, you know. Uh, I think some of the older quarterbacks didn't treat him very nice. Uh, but his second year, man, we really figured some things out. He, he will compete, and uh, he competed really hard at, at uh, Richard freshman year and ended up winning the job. Anyway,